Hi folks, let's make this thermal printer enclosure that will help us automate some of our maintenance and shop tasks here at Saunders Machine Works. The really cool thing about this project is we're building this enclosure by gluing aluminum together and then machining it back down. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Here's our Fusion 360 CAD model. So this guy here is this mini thermal receipt printer from Adafruit. We're gonna hide it and we'll hide the back to it. And this is the task at hand for the Taskmaster. We needed this aluminum housing and there just wasn't a convenient size of any sort of structural extrusion that would work. And I didn't wanna machine it from solid billet. So let's make it. We're gonna cut up some scrap pieces of aluminum. These are readily available and really inexpensive. And we're gonna glue them together. And the key here is we live in a world with some amazing adhesive sealants and glues. This one is Loctite H8000. Its holding power is mind blowing, especially on aluminum. So what we're doing here is we're gonna take five really inexpensive pieces of scrap aluminum. We're gonna glue them together and it's not gonna look really good right now, but take a look at what it's going to look like. It's gonna look pretty awesome. And this is sort of a hacky way of doing something like a casting or like a 3D printing or hybrid manufacturing where we're building this shape up and then we're gonna machine it back down to final size. Finding the center of our piece with the Heimer. We're using the shear hog here, but not our normal one. This is the modular version from Tormach. We have since bought the proper M12 Arbors, but we didn't have one long enough when we were filming this video, so we made one. Starting off by roughing the ring, 6,500 RPMs, about 52 inches per minute, which is eight thousandths of an inch feed per tooth. 0.2 inch optimal load and 0.2 inch roughing step down. That cleans up the top and we'll start roughing out the inside. Same tool, same recipe, walking around the side to rough out the outside. Getting just a little bit of chatter, a hockey puck with some rubber from our Saunders Machine Works fixture plate covers did the trick and sometimes it doesn't take much just to soak up some of that harmonic vibration. A quick superfly deck of the top 2,500 RPMs, 20 inches per minute. Next up, we need a long reach tool. It will fit in our TTS, but it doesn't repeat its Z, so we're going to have to touch it off with paper. This tool is tricky for two reasons. Number one, it's a three quarter inch solid carbide end mill. We want carbide for that stiffness, but darn it, it's a really expensive end mill. The second reason is the larger diameters create more tool pressure, and that means we've gotta be really deliberate and dialed in with our speeds and feeds. Coming in first, with a 3D adaptive, 1,000 RPMs or 196 surface feet per minute, 3,000 of an inch feet per tooth. We're using a 3D adaptive so that we can check rest machining. That means it's going to come in and get what the one inch shear hog couldn't get to. With an optimal load of 15,000 of an inch and a maximum roughing step down of 0.375. After that, we'll do a 2D contour, same tool, 
same RPM and feed rate, but this time taking one inch step downs as we clean up that inside surface. Since our last tool we just touched off by, with a piece of paper, we need to reestablish our Z0 with our Heimer. Next, we're gonna glue on that top lid, roughing up that surface just to promote good adhesion of the glue. We'd rough machine the inside profile, glue it on, and then we're gonna finish both the inside lid for the printer as well as the full outside profile of the project box. These high-end adhesives use these really cool mixing nozzles, which forces these two parts to mix really, really well. That's super useful to have. The nozzles themselves aren't that expensive, and neither is the dispensing gun, and you really do need these. You can try to DIY it by just pushing the adhesive out, but it really needs to mix in a 10 to 1 ratio. So just keep that in mind if you are trying to avoid the cost of the gun and dispenser. Back to our normal shear hog. This is the three quarter inch integral shear hog. Just roughing off the top of our lid. Card here to our page on recommended shear hog feeds and speeds for all different Tormach machines. And a quick superfy to clean up that face. Back to our three quarter inch solid carbide end mill, we're going to now give that finishing pass around the outside of the printer enclosure. Same feeds and feeds as before, and what's funny is it's almost exactly the opposite of what you should expect. Slow down your RPMs or reduce your surface footage and increase your chip load per tooth. We're taking a little bit higher of a chip load per tooth than I normally would take but we want to make sure we avoid chatter, both because we want a good finish here, but also because I don't want to damage this tool. Machining out these Mickey Mouse corners so that our printer fits in, and I really like Ed's trick here. He has the prior shear hog and Superfly ops within this setup, but he's got them set as optional, and he's got a comment that do not post them above. It's only for stock continuity, in this case, using the 3D adaptive here with rest machining to make sure we're only coming in and machining the remaining stock. What I love about this is you can't tell that this was five different pieces of material glued together. Coming through with our edge break chamfer. This is a new to me tool. It's a Lakeshore 3 8 inch chamfer tool, but it's got a very different helix than the standard mill drills that we so often use for chamfering. I was really impressed with the speed at which we could run this as well as the edge quality. We're at 700 surface feet, two thousandths of an inch feet per tooth. It's about 57 inches a minute, and the chamfer looks great. Finally, finishing off with the some engraving with the diamond tool. As always, using the trace operation to do that. We get a lot of questions about this tool, but we measure the tool height normally to the, to the tip of the tool. It's a spring compressible tool though. And then under the passes tab, we set a negative axial offset here that causes it to push the tool into the part and score along. What's great is we can engrave with this tool incredibly fast. Just make sure in your post-processed code to delete the spindle on. It works better when the spindle is not turned on with this tool. I'm hoping in the future that Fusion will let us post with zero RPMs. But again, for now, you've got to just delete that line of code. That tool does a great job. It does tend to raise a burr. So just run your Superfly back over the part, but keep it half a thou or a thou above your Z0. It'll knock those burrs off. We're basically done. Flip our part over. We've just got to deck off the back side of that, including the part of the stock that we were using when we were holding the part in the vise. Clean up the face, add some chamfers, drill a few holes, and we've got our custom-sized additive subtractive hybrid manufacturing enclosure. 
card here to the info on our relatively new Boss Laser, which has been one of the best purchases we made. I cannot tell you how many things that we, we've used this for when it came to projects, enclosures, packaging, shipping, custom foam, custom rubber, cardboard, MDF. It's just been great. And then we're throwing in the electronics. So big shout out to Brad Lotzberg. Brad helped us out a lot with the code that has the Arduino talking to the Adafruit IO and Asana to help this work as a web connected device. So again, Brad, we appreciate your help on this. The idea for this project was I wanted a way to print things out. We live in a digital world, but sometimes it's great to have something on a piece of paper. And what I wanted was a way to start streamlining some of the tasks and responsibilities here at the shop. And I thought what would be great would be to have a printer that says, hey, we need Need to do this kind of like at a restaurant when you get a ticket tape printed and you say okay this is what needs done what we want to do is tie that in with asana card here to the page on how we use asana it really is the glue that holds our shop together and not everybody's in front of a computer screen all day so again the idea of having this printer say hey we need to check the oil level or we need to check the renishaw probe tips or replace the batteries having that come out pre-scheduled on a printer to me sounds like a great idea we'll see on the NYC CNC page, we've got another video that walks through sort of the Arduino code and how we put this together and how you could build something like this. And while we were making this project, we found a different way to do this with more of an off the shelf solution, uh, which can also work totally great. So we wanted to share that with you as well. Having this ability to glue up different sizes and shapes of aluminum, then machine them back down to size is pretty cool. That could be a game changer for some future products and projects. So hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Wednesday. Okay.